Hey, it is Film Fridays. I am loving making these videos, making this series. I hope you guys are loving it too. Um, today we've got an awesome episode as always because we're trying a really unique film today that is made by Lomography. It is called Lomochrome Purple. It is really unique and it's really special because it has a huge, huge color shift. And what I mean by that is that one of the colors, specifically greens and sometimes yellows, will turn purple. Will turn turn purple and pink in this film. And the opposite is true as well. If you have some purples or pinks in the film, uh, those will turn greenish, yellowish. I think today I'm going to head over to the greenest place I know of here in Brooklyn, which is Prospect Park. I'm excited to shoot it. Um, yes, because we're using this film, but also because I'm gonna shoot it in a very unique way. So a few weeks ago, I 3D printed myself these. This is a set of adapters that allow you to take 35 millimeter rolls, like one of these here, and use it in a 120 film camera. So you can see it makes the roll the same height and width as a 120 roll. And the reason you'd want to do this um, is that it'll allow you to actually shoot panoramics. Well, people will argue, why don't you just shoot 120 film and then crop it? Well, the cool thing is that when you do this, it exposes the whole negative. So if you have a, uh, a roll of 35 millimeter film that you're exposing on a 35 millimeter camera, it will only expose the inside portion of the frame here. But when you shoot this on a 120 camera, what is it? what it does, because the frame size is actually bigger than the film, is it exposes the whole film, all the way to the end of the sprockets. It's a very unique look, not everybody loves it. I've never actually shot it, but that's what these adapters here allow me to do. And so I figured I've got this really unique film from Lomography, and also I wanna thank my friend Lou from Sweet Lou Photography. He actually gave me this roll of film. <laughs> but I figured I've got these adapters, I've got this really unique film, and why not combine them both to create something extra unique that I haven't seen yet. So first thing we have to do is we need to load up my camera with the film. I'm actually gonna use my Bronica ETRSI. The main reason for that is that it will advance the film one frame at a time automatically. All of my other 120 cameras, my medium format cameras, you have to open up the little door in the back and wind it until you see the next number. And that's not gonna work for this because if I were to open up that door in the back, it's just gonna expose the film. There's no backing paper like there is on medium format film. What we actually need to do first is add a, an extra long leader to this. If we didn't, we would have to pull this out all around the back of this and we would lose frames. We would expose a lot of film um, that we could actually shoot instead. So what I've done is I've taken a random piece of paper. I just cut this out of an envelope and uh, we're gonna tape this to the actual film itself. So that's a pretty good leader. Um, this, the lighter side, this is the emulsion side, so we need that to be facing backward. So what we're gonna do, let's put on the adapters here. So there's that one. There's that one. And let's put it into our back. Okay. So now our film is securely in there. We're gonna wrap this all the way around and put it through. Now we're going to roll that through. Make sure it's straight down the middle. There we go, now it's pulling the film. So at this point, I'm gonna put it back into the camera here. There we go. It took a little finagling, but we're good. The camera is fully loaded, and so now we just need to head over to Prospect Park. <sighs> I'm so excited about this. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. I'm taking a scooter to Prospect Park because it is easily the quickest way from where I live. Plus, it's the most fun. <laughs> I love these Rebel scooters. I don't even know if you guys can hear me, but we'll see. All right, we're now in Prospect Park. We're actually right by the Boathouse right there, which is um, one of the first sets I want to get. There's almost always a layer of algae here on the lake that's obviously green, and uh, I think that's going to look really cool with the boathouse. They, Lomography says that you can shoot the film anywhere from 100 ISO to 400 ISO, so I'm actually going to shoot it at 200 right in the middle um, to avoid any overexposure, underexposure. 
so many airplanes. Also, I took a few shots, uh, two shots to be exact, on the way over here. One of them, as I was walking in the park, I noticed this really colorful, multicolor building with a, like a mural on it, multicolor mural. It's actually an Uber building, but I wanted to take a photo of that with the camera and then with my digital camera so you can see, you can get a sense of how it changes all the colors. So the second photo I took was right outside of my apartment and it was this fence that had a bunch of green ivy growing on it and the ivy had a lot of little pinkish purplish flowers so I figured it'd be perfect the green would probably turn purple the purple or pinkish would probably turn green it'd be really cool to see how it shifts those specific colors as well one thing that I have to keep in mind when I'm taking these shots is that I have no idea how many photos I'm actually gonna get and I don't want to get to the end of the roll and force it through and rip it after about seven photos or so, I'm just gonna treat every photo like it's the last one and just be gingerly when I'm advancing the frame. Airplane. I wanted to get another shot with the boathouse in the background, but it wasn't really working. There wasn't enough green. I mean, there were trees, but then I walked a little bit further and discovered this right across the path. This, I would be surprised if I found anything else today that's greener than this. So I wanted to try at least one photo where the it's not a panoramic horizontally but vertically and I saw this awesome tree right here so I think I'm gonna try it right here. While we're here, let's take a picture of the sky to see how it handles that color. You guys, I mean, you just saw, but all those stupid planes I keep complaining about because of the noise, I just accidentally and miraculously caught one. I'm excited, but we need to move on. I'm at frame eight right now, so I have no idea how many more I have left. And I went ahead to this place called the Vale of Kashmir. Sounds like important, right? Sounds like something from Lord of the Rings, but it's that way. It's that way some distance, and it's one of my favorite places here in Prospect Park. So let's head there before I run out of film. This is the Vale of Kashmir. This, I think, if I had to choose, is probably my favorite part of Prospect Park. It really does live up to its name. I don't know how it got its name, but it sounds very fantastical, very, almost like fairy, like I said, Lord of the Rings-esque, and this place looks like it. So let's take some photos. It's very interesting for me to shoot this way, shooting panoramic because there have been so many photos I've wanted to take that I thought would be really great photos and they probably would be but in that panoramic aspect ratio they just weren't going to be good photos. I was thinking either in the 645 portrait or uh, landscape and that's what I'm seeing in here so that's what makes it difficult but it's going to be interesting to see how these turn out. We've taken 13's photos so far and we've got to be getting to the end of the roll. So before I finish off the roll, I wanted to make sure to take, try to take a self portrait, which is gonna be difficult, but I've put the, put the camera on the tripod here, took this one off. We'll see how this turns out. I have no idea if that turned out or not, if it's in focus, we'll see, but when I was looking and composing this, I actually liked this area with the, the big open field and the trees and the building. So let's take a photo of that while we're here. We're 
we're on picture 21 and we're still going. So I'm gonna keep walking, heading to the train until, uh, until I run out. For at least the last 10 photos or so, I've been really gingerly turning the knob. Well, I got to photo 25, I just took one, and we're at the end. I don't even know if that last one took, but we're at the end of the roll. I can't roll it back here. Let me get somewhere quieter and I'll tell you why. Well, the reason I had to go someplace really dark, pitch black, to unload the film is that with the medium format camera, you don't have the ability to just rewind it it loads onto a second roll, and when you have medium format film, that's fine. You just unload that roll, stick it closed with the taper, with the licking it, and then you're good to go. But since we were using a 35 millimeter roll in a medium format camera, I had to try and find someplace dark <laughs> to open this up and re-roll the film back into the canister. Now that I have developed all the film and I've scanned it all, I have a few thoughts. First of all, this was a really, really fun experiment. It was fun experimenting with the uh, the adapter to shoot 35 millimeter film in a medium format camera. Um, that was a unique experience and I, I look forward to doing that more. Um, the whole time I was thinking that they're gonna be panoramics, but as you saw from the photos, they're actually a pretty standard um, aspect ratio. They weren't panoramic. If I were to crop out the sprocket holes they would actually look like panoramic photos but the film itself lomochrome purple this is the second iteration of it as far as i know and i have to say it was really really difficult to scan this stuff <laughs> i don't know how um, if i were to take it to the lab and ask them to scan it how they would handle it but me personally i tried to scan it with the epson scan software and it was having lots and lots of trouble so then i tried to just scan the negatives as a positive so i have just the negative and take that into lightroom and that was hard to work with and so i ended up actually downloading a, a plugin that i've been wanting to download for a long time i just haven't because it's a hundred dollars but it's called negative lab pro and as soon as i used that it was much much easier to scan these even still i had to tweak the the uh the colors a little bit but um, as you saw, you may have been able to tell from the photos when I had them up on the screen during the video, if you underexpose this film even just a little bit, it can get really grainy really quick. And also high contrast scenes, um, scenes where you have really, really dark and really, really bright, it's, it doesn't have as much exposure latitude as some of the other color negative films I'm used to shooting. Definitely not as much as something like Portra or Pro 400H by Fujifilm. Um, but that's to be expected. This is a, a, a niche specialty film that has a really unique emulsion. So um, if you're shooting this, I would treat it almost like a slide film in that sense, uh, where you want to be really careful of how you're exposing it. And if you have a proper light meter instead of using your phone like I was doing, um, you could probably get some even better exposures. For me, the ones that I enjoyed the most were the ones where uh, I had actual other colors in the scene. The photos or the scenes I had where basically everything was green, which is you know sort of what I was going for at first, those I didn't like as much. The negative was just pretty much purple all the way across, and it's not as interesting. As I got further into the role, I started experimenting more with different um, different scenes and the ones that have a little bit of sky in them I really like. I found going through the the photos I took that the ones I took further in the roll I liked more. So uh, my advice to you is if you're shooting this definitely include some green in your photos and look out for that because that's what this this film's all about. It's going to turn those greens to a purple magenta color but try to include other colors in there as well. It's really going to give you more of a sense of how this film has a very um, sort of otherworldly quality to it rather than just have all purple everywhere on, on the on the frame so again thanks Lou for giving me this this film to, to play with and to shoot I really appreciate it and uh, Lomography thanks for always just pushing the envelope and trying something new I really enjoyed this this was really fun I, I want to finish this film Friday as I have with the last one and the tradition of recommending someone to you to check out if you're into film photography. 
person I want to recommend this week is Jason. His channel is called Grainy Days here on YouTube. And I discovered it recently, and I think a lot of other people discovered it recently, because when I started watching his videos, he was at a couple thousand, and now he's close to 16,000 subscribers. So he's growing very quickly, and for good reason. He takes really good photos and makes really great and entertaining videos. He's got a really dry sense of humor, but he's really funny. And the videos that he makes are um, just, they look good. <laughs> they look good and they're interesting. So definitely go check them out. Um, I'll have them linked in the, the card up above. But that's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this and that you're looking forward to the next Film Friday. We'll have another video in between now and then. So if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe so you can check that out. And uh, give me a thumbs up, it helps. It lets me know that you guys are liking this stuff. So thank you as always very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to create and explore. Bye.